All right, we are back with the LQ review. I am LQ, and I'm here to talk to you about episode two of Doom Patrol, which dropped on the DC streaming service this morning. Um, going to tell you the good. I'm going to tell you the bad. I'm going to tell you my rating. Whether I think it's whether I think the episode is good, whether I think the episode is bad, or whether I think it's just kind of an okay episode, kind of in the middle. Um, this episode was really weird. And I think that's one of the strengths of Doom Patrol, is it's willing to get weird. It's willing to do things that a lot of other comic book TV shows might shy away from. So let's start with the good. Uh, Robot Man continues to be good. Robot Man continues to be a very strong character in this show, uh, played and voiced by Brendan Fraser. Uh, Robot Man uh, has... A lot of the comedic lines, um, a lot of the team narrative is driven by Robot Man, and he is kind of a driving force behind another one of the characters, um, Crazy Jane. Uh, his story currently is very in a lock with hers. His happens to be a lot more interesting than hers is. But in this episode, her story really came out a lot more, and we really got a lot more of her uh, multiple personalities. I really liked the um, the uh, little girl version of her of her person, one of her personalities. It was really comedic when she addressed Cyborg. So Crazy Jane got better, but Robot Man continues to be one of the stronger aspects of this series. Um. The backstories for most of the Doom Patrol got a lot more fleshed out. I talked about that last week, how we didn't really know much about many of these characters, their origins, their backstories, where they came from, etc. We definitely have a much stronger grasp on that now, especially Negative Man, um, Elasta Woman, Rita Farr, um, not so much Robot Man, but his got explored a lot in the last episode. Uh, Negative Man, Rita Farr, uh, Cyborg. We got a lot of uh, backstory on Cyborg. This was Cyborg's first episode, by the way. He wasn't in the fr uh, he wasn't in episode one. Um, so a lot more backstory, even Crazy Jane, and it answered a lot of questions. Even, we even got some backstory on the um, um, on the uh, antagonist, uh, Mister Nobody. I'll talk about him in a minute. I loved seeing the backstories. I love seeing these characters expanded. Um, again, Doom Patrol continues to get weird. I like that. This was really weird, though. This was really weird. The whole city... Sp sp spoilers, all right? But the whole city gets sucked up into a world, into a vortex, and... The only thing that's left is a donkey, and the Doom Patrol has to go inside the donkey to try to figure out what happened. And the donkey, over the course of the episode, spits some of them out, and one of them willingly goes into the donkey's mouth to try to see what's happening down there, and it's really weird. Really weird episode. I applaud it. I applaud it, because it's... it's, it's it's different. It's a different flavor in this massive comic book stuff that we get between movies and TV. It's a different flavor, and I applaud it for doing that. But man, is it weird. It's I don't know if it's mainstream. You know, I don't know if the mainstream person is going to sit down and say, yeah, that's good. I liked watching that. I think you might have to have the nerd hat on um, to really appreciate it. Not that this is a nerd hat. This is a Cubs hat. So there's nothing nerdy about that at all. But, uh, yeah, this is a lot. Doom Patrol is, is weird, and it's a lot. So I think it's good, but not everybody might agree with me and say that's good. Uh, Rita Farr is another good thing in this episode. Rita is fantastic. I, I, I continue to, uh, to, to get more and more on board with this character. I loved her back when uh, she was in the Doom Patrol episode in Titans, and just... Really enjoying what Rita's bringing to this. Um, kind of a dry comedy. She's a lot of fun. She's a lot of fun. So Rita Farr is another good. Let's talk about the bad a little bit. And most of the bad actually centers around Cyborg. Again, this was Cyborg's first episode. Uh, 
I liked Cyborg more in Justice League, in the Justice League movie. I'm sorry, I did. I don't think this actor was a very good actor. Um, a lot of his line delivery, I was, I, I, there's a couple of them I actually cringed on. I was like, oh man, you could do better than that. And uh, the special effects looked cheap. His costume looked cheap. You know, he looks like he's got a little thing plastered onto his face and he's got a couple cyborg gloves on to make it look like he's half robotic on his hand and other than that he's wearing a jumpsuit a sweatsuit so yeah i just I, i'm not digging cyborg nor i'm not digging his father either silas stone um again done better in justice league the transformation was done better in justice league yeah this one was more gory because apparently they can do that on a streaming service but man it just wasn't as good as we had just seen a year and a half ago so that was my biggest problem most of it centered around cyborg another problem was the antagonist mr nobody we learned a little bit more about him we learned a little bit more about his motivations but i just still don't understand his power set i don't understand um why he is trying to do what he's trying to do i really like the fact that he's narrating the story that's fantastic. Like, he's outside of the, the episode. He even refers to it a number of times as being a, an episode. Um, talks about, well, let's bring on the title sequence now. And then the title sequence comes in. So he can step outside of reality and, uh, and talk about what he's seeing as an objective third party. Which is really interesting. It's kind of Deadpool-like. Um, Deadpool ratcheted up to ten. As far as the uh, breaking the fourth wall, uh, Mr. Nobody definitely does that. So that's cool about him. But the actual antagonist part, uh, it, it's not working for me yet. So you got the narration part of, of Mr. Nobody, which is great. And then the an actual antagonistic part, which isn't working for me. So um, the rating, yeah, Doom Patrol is great. You got to see it. Uh, I. I I gotta give it a yes. I loved every second of it. It's two episodes in, and I'm loving every second of it so far. Now, I've gotta say it with the caveat, though, is that I'm a comic book nerd. I've been reading comic books since I was a little kid. All right, this is the this show was made for me. You might watch it and think, wow, this is too nerdy for me. And that's a fair criticism. It would be a fair criticism because it's nerdy. It's out there. This is a weird show. But for me... Being the nerdy guy that I am, I, I ate it up. I ate it up. So, Doom Patrol definitely gets a thumbs up. Uh, episode 2. And uh, can't wait to see Episode 3 next week. I am LQ. This is the LQ Review. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. And um, you can find me at the LQ Review on Facebook. And as always, uh, thank you for joining me on the LQ Review.